Welcome back, WW Fly Corvair. Today I'd like to talk to you about digital air fuel meters. There is one question that comes up when we talk about air fuel ratios and mixtures and scientific testing that people often have. And the question is, what instrument do you use for this? A lot of people, when you say air fuel meter, they think about going down to discount auto parts or advance, and there's a little uh, plastic package of uh, a gauge that costs $39 that has some red lights and green lights on it, and it's made in the People's Republic of China under communist authority from Throdong province by slave laborers who, uh, you know, earn about a dollar a day, uh, and, uh, you know, Falun Gong members who are imprisoned and all that other stuff. But we don't really want to support that type of stuff, uh, especially you don't want it as instrumentation in your airplane. The more you know about airplanes, uh, one of the really critical things about instrumentation is it has to be good if it's going flying with you, and it has to be really good if you're going to do testing with it and determine anything for other people's airplanes. So, uh, you know, uh, basically you have to have uh, really good instrumentation and I've actually seen a lot more trouble caused over the decades by really cheap air fuel meters that people got from uh, discount in advance uh, because primarily uh, those all work off oxygen sensors as this one does but the main difference between the two is uh, when a cheap discount brand one doesn't get a decent signal what it defaults to is a little green light telling you that everything's hunky-dory. Now, the one thing you never want to have in an aircraft instrument in any way, shape, or form is have the thing fail and tell you that everything's hunky-dory. Uh, that is absolutely not how aircraft instruments work. If you take a look at, like, uh, vacuum flight instruments, uh, it's important enough that when they fail, they actually have like a little flag that appears in the bottom of the instrument window to tell you that it's dead. One of the scenarios of instrument training is how to tell when your instruments aren't right, and they give you every fighting chance. So you never want to include something from trash automotive technology that gives you false information. So moving on to what is good. Uh, in the world of digital air fuel meters, uh, about 15 years ago, if you wanted to get something this good, right, uh, you were talking about spending a thousand bucks for an instrument that weighed about five pounds and was really sensitive and wasn't really ready for flight environment, was really laboratory grade uh, stuff for good testing. And we did stuff like that. But today, you can get instrumentation from this company available for less than 200 bucks that works fantastically. The part number right here, here is the company name, and there's the part number, uh, graphics by me right here, uh, 3918, all right? This is a simple uh, air fuel meter, but it reads out digitally, and you can see it in a lot of our videos. This thing is accurate, works uh, with a very elaborate O2 sensor uh, that can be included in your regular exhaust system on your aircraft. Uh, the company, uh, knowledge is horsepower is true. Uh, in aircraft stuff, knowledge is reliability. So uh, when you have this type of instrument, if you're planning on doing any leaning in the air, uh, if you're an old school guy and you were well schooled in this stuff, uh, absolutely, absolutely, uh, you can use an EGT if you know what you're doing. A good EGT, not a garbage one. But a good EGT, uh, you can lean with that. Now remember, we have a mop manual that specifies how you lean with Corvairs, and you never, ever lean a Corvair motor until it runs rough in the air, because it's detonating, it's not lean misfiring. Uh, go back to the mop manual if you need further clarification on that. But if you're planning on leaning it for maximum efficiency or increased horsepower and takeoff at high altitude, or a number of scenarios like that, and you have a carburetor, that's set up for leaning, uh, like a Rotec or an uh, MA3 SPA, you want to have good instrumentation. Now, old school guys like me and aircraft mechanics, we were trained on EGTs and we know how to use them. If you want something that's much more user friendly for the modern era, you're looking at this critter right here. And you can include this in a little two inch gauge that will read out and tell you exactly what the air fuel meter uh, ratio is. There is no interpretation of whether or not you're lean or rich at peak. It just tells you right off the bat. System works really great 
and we have two of them on the test stand and I found it to be totally reliable. Uh, so I like this critter right here. And if you are planning on uh, developing an installation, one of the things that we tell people to do uh, when they put it in their airplane, when they're looking for this type of instrumentation, uh, uh, I suggest that they put uh, install this uh, in their airplane. And one of the benefits is it's the exact same system that we use here when we're testing things. So our numbers are your numbers. There's no variation in how uh, the information is uh, picked up and processed by the system. We have people who always say, well, my EGT reads uh, 1325 degrees. Well, their brand of EGT is not my brand of EGT. Uh, their, uh, uh, their location uh, is not the same, uh, all of that sort of stuff. But in digital air fuel meters, uh, they are much, much less sensitive to that type of stuff. And if we're on the same page because we're using the same equipment, then you can use the data that we provide with the maximum amount of usefulness and confidence in it. So again, as you're going forward into uh, the coming year and you're planning an installation, plan it around this critter right here. Uh, I highly recommend them. Again, uh, product placement right here, endorsement and everything. I don't make a dime off selling this stuff. Uh, you just go, we directly steer you to it. So uh, in the world of uh, experimental aviation, where it's inundated by consumerism, where every single person's recommendation is really based on what's in it for them and what their cut is, what's in it for me on this, I'll tell you directly, is your Corvair motor will work better and you will be a better, more reliable operator. And in the long run, that makes me look smarter. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind as an option for the coming year for your aircraft. And when people talk to you about air fuel meters, be a smart guy and realize that a lot of the people are talking about the discount auto parts, uh, you know, Throdong Province, Chinese brand, uh, fails with a green light type of uh, garbage. Uh, actually seen that stuff uh, cause people to hurt their engines saying, oh, well, I thought it was perfect. I was just leaning it and leaning it and leaning it and it was always staying on a green light. Uh, that's great. They had a ground failure on it and they never knew it. And uh, their first indication of having a ground failure was uh, they uh, uh, burned an electrode off a spark plug. So be a smart guy. Take advantage of the stuff that we do right there. Follow the link in the description text below. You can find more stories that we've written about it. Uh, and I think we can actually probably get a link to you. But you can uh, direct link to a supplier on this. But check that out for this coming year. Thanks very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you out on the flight line.